Greetings and salutations, Riverfront family. Nate Dotson here with the most exciting seven minutes of your week. I sincerely hope that isn't true, by the way. It's another series recap. Well, we welcome those pesky Milwaukee Brewers to Cincinnati. And, well, shucks, our Reds are on fire. That's back-to-back -back series wins for the good guys. And guess what? I'm here to tell you all about it. Uh, the set kicked off with a highly anticipated game one, thanks to the return of rotation ace Luis Castillo. Going in, I think we all would have been happy with a solid, healthy outing. And, well, that's exactly what we got. Castillo narrowly missed going the full five innings due to a misplayed ground ball by Kyle Farmer, who no one is confusing with Ozzie Smith out there. Uh, he finished with four and two-thirds innings with three earned runs, three walks, five strikeouts. You know, stat line aside, it's, it's just freaking awesome having Luis out there again. There's not a team in the big leagues that wouldn't want that guy in their rotation. The offense put up five runs in the fifth and three in the eighth, thanks to three-run bombs by Barry B No, sorry, sorry, I meant Brandon Drury and Kyle Farmer, who, much like Stella, seems to finally be getting his groove back. Jury, Tommy Pham, Tyler Naquin, Albert Amora Jr., and Matt Reynolds all had two hit days for the home team, while Alexis, don't call me Edwin Diaz, Jeff Hoffman, and Joel Kunal finished things off with 3.1 innings of scoreless relief as your Cincinnati Reds took the opener 10-5. Tuesday's game two matched up young gun Hunter Green and Freddie Peralta. After a 28-pitch first inning during which he issued three bases on balls, Green then settled down. He ended up with a very solid day, going five and a third with two earned runs, four walks, and six strikeouts. Love seeing some progress from Hunter. You know, after taking a 1-0 lead in the second on back-to-back -back doubles by Mike Moustakis, to whom I, I owe a sincere apology for ever doubting, and Tyler Stevenson, who might be the hottest hitter in all of baseball, the offense decided to go cold, not scoring again until a three-run rally in the eighth. A fantastic but stupid catch that I hated by Luis Urias prevented Kyle Farmer from tying it up, and the Reds dropped game two, five to four. Well, it was put up or shut up time in game three, and the home team decided they were not done talking. The Reds showed up and treated Milwaukee pitchers like they stole their lunch money, winning a 14 to 11 slugfest as the good guys got a series victory against the first place team in the Central Division. When the dust settled, the Reds got multi hit games from TJ Friedel, Tommy Pham, Mike Moustakis, Tyler Stevenson, Tyler Naquin, and Colin Moran, who also went yard again for good measure. The pitching was an abject mess, other than Alexis Diaz, but who cares? The Reds won the game, the Reds won the series. And that is all that matters. Shining for the home team this week, on the offensive side, we had Colin Moran inexplicably hitting two more home runs. Tyler Stevenson going six for 13 with three doubles and five RBIs. Uh, Tyler Naquin went five for 11 with five RBIs. And as for the pitching, the only real standout was Alexis Diaz, who tossed uh, had two appearances, tossing two and two-thirds scoreless innings out of the pen. And because we just beat the best team in the division, I don't want to dwell too much on the bad. But we got to mention, Vladimir Gutierrez was gross again, giving up four and four and two thirds. I lobbied to get him out of the rotation after his last outing, but apparently Nick Crawl and David Bell don't listen to this podcast. Darry Moretto also had another rough, rough outing, allowing five earned runs without recording a single out. He has not looked too hot lately, but the stuff is there, and hopefully he figures it out soon. Our series stud this week, Tyler Stevenson once again. Another great series at the plate for our QB1. My goodness, the sky is the limit for the young fella. As for the series dud, yeah, it's got to be Dari. I'm sorry, my guy, but an ERA of infinity is not going to cut the mustard. Um, just a few not-so-random thoughts. In game one, every red starter had a hit and scored a run. That's the first time that's happened since June of 2007. Love to see more of that. Uh, Tommy Pham manufactured a run in Monday's game that I freaking loved. You talk about getting better in a weird way. I can only imagine this is the kind of stuff you envision. But in the bottom of the fifth, he extended the rally by a singling with the bases loaded. He stole second, moved to third on a ground out, and then scored on a pass ball. You can't teach that speed. Kyle, the farm dog farmer, ended an 0 for 34 streak. That was the second longest in team history behind only the immortal Virgil Stalkup. That's a real name, I swear. And lastly, in game two, Hunter Green threw the slider as often as he did his speed ball. Sorry, Chad, I can't resist. Um, I don't know if that was part of the plan going in, but I do find it interesting. And for what it's worth, that slider is nearly as nasty as that uh, triple-digit fastball, sometimes even nastier. Up next, the Reds head east to Pittsburgh for a four-game set against the Dirty Pirates. Uh, remotely healthy, I don't think anyone would claim that Pittsburgh is the better ball club. And I am going live and predicting three out of four victories for our beloved boys in red. The Reds go into that series with a 7-24 and record. But as winners of their last two series and four out of the last six, if they keep it up, we might even be allowed to stop relishing that legendary series split in Atlanta to open the season. 
Hey, that'll do for this one, folks. Enjoy it while it lasts. It's been fun. Until next time.